Hi, I'm Casey Lackey for Innovative Sugarworks, and today I'm gonna to show you guys how to make gunge. Now gunge is this magical stuff that I use to fill in um, spaces between tiers if I've got like a finger mark or a nail mark in my fondant or any cracking. You can basically use it like wall spackle to fill in holes and gaps and whatever you want. So the way to make this stuff is I've got 200 grams of whatever color fondant I'm using. You want to start with the colored fondant because this way you never have to color match to what you're trying to fix. Doing this with royal icing, trying to color match royal icing fondant is a pain and it takes a long time so this is so much easier. So I've got my 200 grams separated into two equal balls. The first one I'm going to kind of pinch and shred into my mixer. I've got my whisk attachment or my whip attachment for that. And then right here, I've got 15 grams of whole milk and 15 grams of vodka. You wanna be sure you don't use any long life milk because it just doesn't work quite the same way, so make sure it's refrigerated fresh milk and vodka. You wanna use this because if you just use vodka or you just use water, it will dry shiny. You want it to dry matte. The milk fats and the milk solids dry completely matte on the fondant, so you won't even be able to tell where you did your gunging later. So go ahead and pop this guy in there. So now you want to mix this for about five minutes until it becomes kind of like a thick, gluey paste. Um, and once you're at that point, we'll start adding in more of our fondant until we get the consistency of Stiff Peak Royal Icing is what we're looking for. But I'll stop it before we add this so you guys can see what it looks like and then we'll keep going. So back in a sec. All right. So now we've got our first stage. So you can see it's a nice smooth consistency. You can see kind of the ribbon, but you want to go to more stiff peak royal icing. So this is when you'll start adding that, uh, that other 100 grams of fondant. Now, depending on the brand of fondant you use, if you use Everclear versus vodka, if you live, use lemon extract, or if you just use straight milk, um, you might not use all of this. So I always say start with about a third, let it mix and become a paste, and then keep adding a third until you get that uh, kind of stiff peak royal icing consistency. All right, so now we've got our gunge all mixed up. I used all 200 grams of mine um, with my fondant. I was using the, uh, the Karma fondant. And so you can kind of see the consistency of it. It's kind of like, I, I always say, it's pretty close to Stiff Peak Royal Icing. If you got just a little tiny bit on there. Boop. Just like that. And so then, boop. I'm gonna take a piping bag. I use a two to a two and a half uh, tip, round. And just go ahead, Reep. come here. Take a little bit of this stuff right into your piping bag. And now we're ready to start gunging our cake. So we got this guy here. And basically what I like to go for when I'm gunging, the number one thing I do on every single cake that goes out the door is filling in that seam right there. Just because I hate piping borders and I would rather it be seamless. And so you just wanna pipe a thin line all the way around the base. I tend to do all three separations because I want to give it a little bit of time to dry and set. So I've got my milk and vodka mixture, the same thing I used in the gunge. I just like to lubricate my tools a little bit so they don't drag. And I'm using my yellow firm chisel. And you just wanna go in and you're pushing the gunge into the seam. Just kind of scrape away any excess as you're going on. It's like magic. 
And then if you have a little spot like this that I need to put a little bit more in, I'll just go back in with my piping bag. Put in a little bit more. And then just press and fill. And you're using a very light touch when you do this. You don't want to press too hard or you'll end up leaving a line all the way around the exact width of your shaper. That's why I like to use the firm for this because it kind of forces me to be really light-handed with it. And as you see, the color is a perfect match. Hooray! And then I've got a little bit of a bigger hole right there so I can go ahead and kind of Fill that guy in again. And then filling in the bottom. And you'll notice if you don't wet the end of your tool, it just drags a little bit too much and you get feathering. So that's why I always get the end of my tool wet before I use it, just so that I don't get that drag and that feathering, especially when I'm working on something that's kind of like wet and sticky like the gunge. And if for some reason that you are trying not to use alcohol, you can just use straight milk. Works perfectly fine or water. Water tends to leave a shine, so I try to avoid that at all costs, but using milk is totally fine. And then there you go. So that looks pretty good to me, but oh no, say you do that. I do that all the time because I'm really clumsy and I sometimes have nails and things happen. You can use your gunge to fill in a hole like that as well. I've actually got a couple little nail dings up there I'll go ahead and fill in. So using the same chisel, instead of scraping, I kind of pat and then wipe side to side. And then again, just kind of pat with the side so it goes right inside that hole or ding or mark. And then once again, just kind of drag it side to side. It's the pat and drag. Pat, 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 pat. And as I always say in my live classes, sound effects help. And just like that, you can fix pretty much anything you might possibly do to a cake that you'd like, oh my God, I did this, I have to recover it. No, try to gunge it first. So that's our tutorial on Gunging 101. I hope you guys learned a lot. Please feel free to check out our YouTube page for some other handy dandy tutorials and have fun.